In this video I'm going to look at ISO settings, what they are, how to alter them and what the implications are. Now it may well be that your camera has an auto ISO setting which will probably work quite well in most circumstances but it is well worth knowing what the manual settings are on your camera and how to use them to get the very best results. Now what does ISO mean? Well in digital terms it means how sensitive the chip inside the camera is to light. Now if we're taking pictures in very good lighting conditions, say outside in bright sunshine, we can use a low ISO setting such as 100 or 200. If we go into poor lighting conditions, say indoors without flash, we may well want to use a higher ISO setting such as 800 or 1600. This means that we can use a faster shutter speed or a smaller aperture or both. So you might say, well, why not just use a high ISO setting all the time? Well, because we get better quality pictures with a lower ISO setting. When we move up to the higher speeds, we introduce something called video noise, which is very similar to the grain effect that we used to get with film in the old days. So it's better to use a lower ISO setting if we possibly can. Of course, the great advantage with digital over film is that we can alter the ISO setting for every single picture that we take if we want to. We're not stuck with having to take, say, 36 pictures all at the same setting. So let's have a look at how we go about changing the ISO setting on this digital SLR. On this particular camera, I have an LCD screen on the top as well as a screen on the back, and I can use either of them to change the ISO setting. To use the screen on the top, I simply press down the ISO button on the back of the camera and that changes the display from the normal display to the ISO setting. I then hold down the plus and minus button and using the command dial, I can alter the ISO up to a maximum of 1600 ISO or I can back it off back to the minimum on this particular camera, which is 200 ISO. And then when I take my finger off the ISO button, we'll return back to the normal top screen. The alternative way of doing it on this camera is to use the rear screen and it may be that on your camera you only have the rear screen in which case this will be the way to do it. I've just hooked up this lead to a larger monitor so that we can see more clearly what's happening. I press the menu button and that will give us the menu. You can see that the ISO setting is down at the bottom of this camera menu and to reach it, to alter it, I simply press down on this scroll control, go down to ISO and across. Now we can see that currently the ISO is set to 200. If I want to alter it, I simply scroll down and select an alternative setting. Let's say I want 800, select that, go across to OK it, and now we've selected ISO 800. What I can also do on this camera if I change the menu setting and scroll down again, I can go to ISO Auto, which is currently set to off. If I go across and select on, like so, the camera will now select the ISO setting automatically dependent upon the amount of light. That's quite a good uh, setting if you just want to not have to worry about the ISO and just uh, leave the camera to make the decisions for you. But generally speaking, I would tend to have that in the off position and choose my own ISO setting uh, as I want for each individual picture. Let's just see how we'd use the different ISO settings in real life situations. Here I've got a picture taken outdoors in uh, quite bright conditions, uh, plenty of light for photography. And if we have a look at the ISO setting, we'll see it was taken on ISO 200 which is the lowest setting for this camera. And if we look at the exposure, we have a 50th of a second at f13, which is quite a reasonable exposure uh, for this type of subject. If we move on to a quite different type of subject, this time we've moved indoors for a picture inside a museum. And if we look at the reading this time, we can see that this was taken on a setting of ISO 800. And if we just look at the exposure, we can see we've now got a 20th at f4.5. So we're getting pretty close to what's possible for hand holding and probably even into the area where we might want to start using a tripod. I mentioned the problem of video noise and let's just have a look at a couple of examples which will highlight this problem. 
Here's a picture taken in very good lighting conditions at 200 ISO, which is the lowest setting on my camera. And we can see that even if we go to a very high magnification, we still have very good image quality. There's no evidence of any mottling or any breakup of the picture. On the other hand, if we go to a picture taken in very low light conditions, and I had to use 1600 ISO for this picture, Again, at a high magnification, we can see evidence of video noise, this mottling which is creeping up, particularly in the shadow areas, that's where you will tend to notice it the most, we see this sort of unevenness, uh, which will show up as a sort of grainy mottled effect on our finished pictures. So the best advice is to always use the lowest ISO setting for the given lighting conditions that you can get away with, and that way you'll always get the best picture quality.